Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar, taking a look at the new features inside Final Cut Pro 10 versions 10.03 and 10.04. By the way, we have a new subscription service. All of our online video training, our tutorials, and webinars are now available via a subscription. This includes all of our Final Cut Pro 10 training and our brand new Adobe CS6 training. For one low monthly fee, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the Internet. And as a bonus, subscribers can attend any of our live weekly webinars for free. This is a fast and low-cost way to access all of our online training. And to learn more, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. What I want to cover today is to show you the new features inside the 1004 update, the new features inside the 1003 update, and provide time to answer your questions. The 1004 update, which released about 10 days ago, is relatively minor. It had changes to preference settings, changes to import settings, changes to default project settings. External video monitoring is no longer considered beta. Apple's been able to improve the performance and make it really sprightly. Also, they've improved clip syncing for DSLR video, where we're doing dual system recording. And they've also improved syncing, as we'll see in this demo today, of multicam clips. They've also added a variety of improvements for program stability. Let me show you what some of the new features are in 1004. Let's start with preferences. If I go up to Final Cut Pro, go down to Preferences. When we go to the editing preferences, a couple changes were made. First, in the middle, they've added this inspector units. In the past, all the inspector settings were based upon making a change represented by a percentage of the clip. I'm cropping 10% in from one of the sides. But they've added the ability now to select between percentages and pixels. I want to crop 25 pixels in from the left, or I want to move this 25 pixels. And you can set the preference for the inspector units here in the editing window. Something that's missing, became missing in the 1003 update. Down here under transitions, it used to give us the choice between having transitions work with available media or full overlap. Now, available media is what we used to work with in Final Cut 7, and it requires handles. Handles are extra video before the in and extra video after the out. If there's only a little bit of video where those two clips can overlap, then the duration of our transition is constrained, restricted by the amount of extra video before the in and after the out. And so the Apple invented full overlap to pull up media from the right-hand side of your timeline equal to the duration of your transition. Well, this just flustered everybody, and so Apple removed it with the 1003 release. Now, if you apply a transition and you don't have enough media in the handles, extra media before the in or the out, then it gives you a dialog at the moment of the transition to say, do you want to either work with a media that's available or do you want to do a pull-up? do full overlap. This is a much better way to work because now it's not set as a preference. We're able to address it on a case-by-case, transition-by-transition basis. They also made changes to the playback preference. A couple things here. Let's click on this. First, in 10.3, they added two additional warnings. Create optimized media for multicam clips. They obviously couldn't add that until they added multicam, and multicam showed up with 10.3. And warn when frames are dropped due to hard disk performance. The biggest cause of drop frames is because your hard disk isn't fast enough to keep up. Now you get a warning message to say, hey, your hard disk is too slow. If you're going to do multicam work, you really need a fast RAID, a significantly fast RAID, not just a single hard drive. It won't be enough to keep up. As we'll learn, multicam supports up to 64 cameras rolling at once, which is a massive amount of hard disk data transferring from one place to another. This gives you a chance to see where the problems are in your system. They also made changes to the import, and the change is what's not there. Under video, there used to be an option to analyze for image stabilization and rolling shutter. That means that it would take a look at every incoming clip and decide whether you wanted to adjust it to stabilize it because it's a handheld shot. Well, the problem is this analysis takes four 
ever. And if you're bringing in one handheld shot and 25 non-handheld shots, you're wasting a huge amount of time and soaking up a ton of disk space analyzing clips that don't need to be analyzed in the first place. So what Apple did is they totally took this off the preference and took it out of ingest and moved it to a clip-by-clip -clip effect. I'll show this to you in just a second. Let me prove that it's missing. Not only has it gone here, but if I go up to, let's create a new project. So we'll go down here and we're doing something on new features, project one, and we'll call it ingest. And let's link it to, oh, some Pond5 images. Creates a new project. File, import, files. Keyboard shortcut is Shift Command I. It's been there since the beginning of the program, but what's not been there since the beginning of the program is down here. That's sort of like a quadruple negative. There was one more option that was in the 1001 and 1002 releases. You could analyze for image stability and rolling shutter, and that's gone. So the way this works now, I'll show you in just a second, is how we can adjust for a shaky camera or how we can adjust for leaning, uh, called a jelly shutter or a rolling shutter that's caused by DSLR cameras. So we don't fix it on ingest anymore. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my store at larryjordan.biz store and look for webinar 66.